Let's take a look at one of the most common surfaces in the world. Something like this, uh, maybe a little bit of a peak over here, and then it gets quite tall over here, and there it is. One of the most common surfaces in the world. You probably recognize it already because it's crazy obvious, right? No, not really. It's hard to recognize the surface of the world that we see in maps and we actually walk on every day unless we see it as a map. It's difficult to understand that that's the map of the world when we only have a profile graph. If I slice a profile across the world, I might see the Himalayas or the Rockies, but by itself the profile graph is kind of meaningless. This is the same thing that happens in many engineering surfaces. We use profile measurements to understand our surface texture, but the profile measurements themselves may not tell us the whole story. For example, inside a cylinder bore, we're going to have scratches or valleys due to honing, but we also might have pits and pores due to the material. And when we measure this surface, we can't tell the difference between the scratches and the pores through a simple profile graph. It's this kind of thinking that's driving many people towards the world of three-dimensional surface analysis. So instead of measuring a line along the surface, we actually measure an area and get a three-dimensional representation that gives us perhaps more information. Now often we will call this a 3D surface because it does have X and Y and Z coordinates. But technically this is called aerial data when you see the kind of thing I've drawn here. So understand there's a different term. We can go into that more in detail later. But the principle is getting into this space gives us more understanding than a simple profile. Now to get here, we're going to change things up a little bit in terms of the measurement. Typically, we're going to use an optical system, some kind of lens with light and sensing based on optics rather than our old friend, the diamond stylus tip that moves along the surface and collects points. Now, there are some parallels between these, and if we understand the parallels, we can better make the move from two dimensions to three dimensions. So, for example, our stylus instrument is collecting data points along the way to create the profile graph. This data set was created by some radius, the tip radius of the stylus itself. It's being moved along and collecting data at some spacing and that is the those are the two pieces of kind of resolution a tip radius and a spacing sets up our ability to see fine details there's more on that in our previous video and we also are measuring along some length these three properties are also present in our 3d or aerial measurement we're collecting data and collecting an image of the surface based on similar properties. Instead of the radius, we have optical properties in the system. We have things like diffraction limits or the sensing mechanism in terms of the area that's being sensed at each point. So these optical properties can relate to the stylus. Instead of spacing, we now have pixels. So we might have a pixel size and the pixels in the optical world are analogous to the data point spacing in the stylus world. Lastly, in an optical measuring system, we have some field of view. We have some amount of area that this image is being acquired over. So these three properties, the optical properties can relate to the stylus, the pixels can be related to the spacing, and the field of view can be related to a measuring length, if these three properties can be related or aligned with each other, we can often get good agreement between the measuring systems, and that's a great thing. If we can get agreement, that means we can choose between the two systems for the method that best suits our needs. So if we are looking, for example, at problem of, just problem of distinguishing porosity from scratches, we can move into a three-dimensional or aerial space. But on the other hand, what if we're interested in something like waviness? 
a stylus instrument can make a long measurement very quickly and help us understand things like waviness where the optical instrument might struggle with this. We may have to stitch together several images in order to get waviness or we would have to take one large image at lower resolution to get waviness. So optical and 3D measurement or aerial measurement, as it's technically called, is a very powerful tool. It can be related back and forth to our stylus, and it could enhance your ability to understand your surfaces. So there is a place for both, and at Digital Metrology, we'd love to help you with that. So feel free to reach out to us at digitalmetrology.com, and stay tuned for more videos as we unpack this world of 2D versus 3D, or should I say, 2D versus aerial.